Hi, I'm Jens Sanderson from Danfoss Climate Solution. You've probably found this video because you want to know more about transcritical refrigeration systems. In this short video, we will therefore presume that you have a certain level of understanding of refrigeration systems in general, and that you have a general idea about the log pH diagram and what it can tell us about the system. We'll start out with the two phases and a few steps in between, you know, the liquid phase, the gas or vapor phase, and the intermediate step, which is a mix of liquid and vapor or gas. Here the log pH diagram with carbon dioxide with the critical point. This looks like our usual background, so I'll just show you the, the components in what we could call a traditional system. But we're going to talk about transcritical systems, so what is a transcritical anyway? Well, with CO2, the condensing temperature at the critical point would be 32 degrees Celsius or 76 degrees Fahrenheit. So, it's by no means difficult to imagine a higher condensing temperature, like maybe 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which would then result in a rather high condensing pressure, maybe some 90 bar, 130, 1300 PSI, well above the critical point. Above the critical point, the refrigerant, the CO2, is not capable of condensing, changing phase back, so to speak, to the liquid phase because of the high pressure. And that gives us a few problems. If we were to work with a traditional system, that is, first of all, the high pressure in itself would put extra cost to the building of the system, that's obvious. But secondly, also the lack of a well-defined liquid flowing back to the expansion device, it would be like operating a system with a lot of flash gas. So no, not really very effective. So we need to do something. And that something is of course to separate liquid from gas and how better to do that than by means of gravity. What we do is to lower the pressure of this fluid and then let it run down into the receiver with two outlets, one for gas and another for liquid, a method you also know from flooded evaporators. Quite simple, but effective. Now, the liquid part is of course directed to the TXV and the gas is equally obvious directed to the suction line. So, how do we control this? The simple answer would be, we just leave it to the electronics to control the pressure valves, the high pressure valves and the receiver pressure valve. But let's just have a closer look at the two pressure valves, starting with the high pressure valve. The opening degree of the HP valve is controlled by the outlets of the gas cooler, the temperature and the pressure. The two valves are stepper motor valves, so they can actually con be controlled quite precisely to the opening degree that gives the best efficiency. The receiver pressure regulator is no different from the HP valve, it's the same type of valve. Sensors report to the electronics what the current situation is and the algorithm and electronics decides what the valve should do. Now, if you want to know more about this, you can take a look at one of our many infographics on the subject. You can find in the link below or you can take a look at the CCMT valve datasheet. Here a more complete diagram over a small commercial system with two temperature zones, freeze and cooling. You can see much more in the Danfoss datasheet for CCMT regulating valves. Please follow the link below. But an easier way of working with transcritical CO2 commercial systems is to use a CO2 condensing unit like the Danfoss Optima ICO2. So all in all, transcritical isn't at all critical. It's in fact quite simple, as long as we let the competent electronic do the calculations and the regulations for us.